<laughs> I just want to say, because she didn't want me to say it, but February is a wonderful month. Because you sound like the church ladies who go up <laughs> and they do the February birthdays and they go up there and just... let me do it for February. February is a wonderful <laughs> month. Let's give it up for all the blessings. But we do have a lot of blessings. Like it's a celebration. Let's celebrate the blessings. Hey y'all, welcome to Notes from Black Girls Podcast. <laughs> it's your girl Tiana. And it's Taylor. I'm just gonna say checking in, checking in, because you know you be But it's that. like, it's kind of weird when you're on camera, like. Well, and, and that's why I told you not to do it the first time. <laughs> I'll do it on camera, like. Okay. Checking in, boom, 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 like. Boom, uh, it's sexy. Anyway. <laughs> So we are back. It's season two. We hope you enjoyed season one. Uh, as you can see, it's something a little different, you know. We are officially on YouTube. Um, so we'll still be on Apple um, Podcasts and Spotify. Um, but we decided that we wanted y'all to see our faces and because we're truly hilarious. And I want y'all to see how Taylor be cutting up. So, so what I'm hearing, this is you trying to out me. Like, yeah, the yeah, the people okay. got to see how you act. Noted. Um, thank you for sharing. Um, rude. so to get to get this thing started off, um, when this drop is Black History Month, baby. Yeah, Happy Black History Month. Uh, black, black, black on black on black. Yeah, turn me up. Um, so <laughs> as you can see, I have on. I hope the camera can see it for real. Um, a hoodie from a black owned business mm -hmm. called Euphoric 777. Shout out to them men because they're, um, kind of dismantling the stigma of, um, black men, um, essentially taking mental health into their own hands. Like they also have a hoodie that says mental health matters and they have the hotline. So shout out to y'all. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, dude. Shout out to the black therapists that matter. Uh, okay. We got a message on the shirt. Okay. So, as let's get into this episode, as you guys can see, this is hot off the press, like Madam CJ walked through this hot comb. Shout out to that lady. Um, so, as we know, we always talk about um, her inventing the hot comb, but let's get into my girl's other inventions, because she's not, she didn't just create the hot comb, okay? She was an entrepreneur. Yeah. The first. The first, yeah. And so, let's get into the vegetable shampoo, because mm. like zucchini like what was the vegetables my girl was putting in that's probably why she had to get the hot comb because yeah, when you got just vegetables sitting on your scalp <laughs> i know it was like the roots was given given thick and let's also talk about she created the first hair straightening like serum i guess mm -hmm. you could say or formula and my girl had her face on that like let's get into her marketing mm -hmm. like she was ahead of her time like i don't know anybody putting their face on something except for the dead president shout out to my girl <laughs> She had to let y'all know who yeah, it was. Yeah, because it's Big Madam. And I think that's even a flex. Like, your her name, name is was Sarah. Madam. Because her name is Sarah. Yeah. And I think for as Black History Month, address me as Madam. Yeah. yeah. Madam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's get into the importance of the hair as a culture. Turn mm -hmm. me up. So um, in slavery, slaves oftentimes, like the slave masters made them shave their heads. Mm -hmm. And it essentially was a tactic to um, kind of take away our identity. Like mm -hmm. we don't know who we are. Like we're bald. Like sucks to suck because we're back and we're better, baby. Um, but and oftentimes if they didn't make you shave your head, like you had to hide your head during mm -hmm. the week. And then on Sundays, you could like reveal. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a cool correlation of like, we kind of said as a culture have the Sunday's best situation yeah. going on. Um, because I don't know about y'all, but I got to put on my best for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then um, also one, another thing I want to highlight in the journey of like black culture, black hair mm -hmm. is how we oftentimes assimilated to the Caucasian culture of having straight hair. Yeah. So we had straight hair for a long time and we were taught like our hair is more manageable when we wear it straight, which mm -hmm. honey, our hair is manageable in every state. 
Mm-hmm. But I won't get into that. But you can kind of speak more of like the Black Revolution side. Yeah. So when we moved into the 70s, you saw more so of like a Black liberation. So you saw people, Black people take pride in their identity. And I think it was one of the first times that was after the Civil Rights Movement, we got a few rights, you know, but um, we were able to sort of kind of show appreciation to our identity and especially in our hair. So that's where you saw a lot of the Afros and you saw a lot of um a lot of like natural state. Like you didn't really see some black people of course, you know, straighten their hair, but you saw more of like that froze and the natural, like just how you wear your hair naturally, how it comes. Um, and moving into the 80s and the 90s, you saw a lot of protective styles, especially in the 90s with the braids and the box braids. But we were also introduced to hair weaves and um, to relaxers. And we went back to wearing our hair more in a straighter um, in a straighter state. So uh, I always think about the 90s. I always think about Aaliyah. And y'all know how Aaliyah had a bust down middle part with a wrap. Uh, I feel like a lot of artists, especially back then, they were pressing their hair. Um, they had a little bump to it, but it was always straight. Mm-hmm. Um, or you were most, more so like in braids, like you saw Janet Jackson and Poetic Justice and things like that. Um, and then moving into the early 2000s, um, we were still on a cream crack. We were still wearing our hair straight. Um, but we were also wearing extensions or we ponytails. Uh, we did have some a few people that were celebrating like their natural hair, like Jill Scott and Ire, Erica, um, mm-hmm. yeah, Erica um, Badu, and so we saw a lot of we saw like different styles for Black women, but it was still weaves. It still was like the relaxer. But I think moving now to more modern times, I would say it's almost like a taboo for Black women to have uh, relaxed hair because most Black women um celebrate the natural state that your hair is in so you see a lot of loose naturals you see a lot of girls that are locking their hair now um and so i think that we have a beautiful journey of how we've come from especially from slavery time until after the civil rights movement to now how our hair has changed um but i think that black hair is still a very important part of our identity and who we are because no matter what we have, what what state our hair is in, where it's natural or relaxed, our hair gonna be done. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, look at you doing a segue, I didn't even know. So let's get into the <laughs> when you use journey. Let's talk about our own hair journey. Mm. So um, I'll dive into mine. I most definitely did have the Easter bump. Yeah, I had the Easter bump for sure. Um, but growing up, in all seriousness, I had the two puffs. Like that was like my signature style. Um, and then in middle school, I kind of had, you know, like the braided mm-hmm. styles, like my edges was getting full. Cool, okay. Then I, whenever I had the beads, like I really thought I was that girl because I could hear the beads <laughs> clacking. Me too. I have a picture, maybe I insert it here, of me shaking my hair because I used to shake the little beads. Like when Willow came out with my hair, yeah, I did like before. that resonated with me. Because I whip my hair back and forth, okay? <laughs> um, that was a moment. And then in high school is when I started going for the silk press. Mm-hmm. I was the silk press queen. I did not care that the girlies was hanging out. Like, I had to go to the caterers grading to go to my auntie to get my silk press. There was no and, ifs, or buts. Like, I would sacrifice to go get my silk press because one thing about me, my hair was going to be done. How often did you go? Every two weeks. Okay. I was on the street. And then um, the protein treatment, Um, I think it was like once a month. Yeah. Oh, excuse mm. me. Yeah, I'm getting to it. Shout out to that lady. Um, Miss Thurman. <laughs> mm. So um, then after that in college is when I started my loose natural type of vibe. Um, I've always been a loose natural technically but we was dealing with heat damage at the time mm-hmm. and um <laughs> essentially i went to a bsu meeting not dealing with heat damage. we were we really were Did you know it was heat damage um i didn't really like i shampooed my hair and pulled out that flat on like i wasn't really looking yeah, at it like matter. it didn't matter because it was gonna be late i didn't really look at um 
And it's a problem because I thought when they say you don't have a perm, I thought that was like, yeah, that was good, man. You might as well just got that perm. <laughs> yeah, I might as well got that perm because that the hair, hair was damaged. damaged. I know you would probably did less damage to your hair. My hairdresser told me to get but one, but I just like no, like you just thought you was. <laughs> That's I was how like, you were doing your black liberation. Yeah, I'm like no, I'm not getting the creamy crack. Um. And also, my mom wouldn't let me get the creamy crack because she had a, her own bad experience with the mm-hmm. creamy crack. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, college, fast forward, I did a big chop the beginning of my sophomore year. And then um, I kind of, like, just took it as, like, this is my journey as a loose natural. Like, I'm going to learn, like, my hair. Like, I took full pride in it. Like, I had a hair calendar. Like, I did my deep conditioning once a month. And then... I also found a way to do the hair mayonnaise incorporation. Mm-hmm. Like I was very serious about my craft. Um, and then I woke up one day and I said, hmm, if this already isn't a challenge, I want another one. Let me go ahead and lock my hair. Um, my mom started her lock journey before me. And um, I was like, okay, this that's kind of cool or whatever. But it's like I had gotten to a point where Lucy Natural, I'm like, y'all, I'm tired. Like, it was to the point where I finished studying and then I still got to do my hair. Like, I was tired in college. So, I said, yeah, locks it is. Um, So, yeah, I went and locked my hair and that's where here it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think for me, so growing up, my mom, I always made sure that my hair was done, especially with going to, I would either go and get my hair done. Uh, every week, or my aunt would do it, or my cousin would do it when I got in high school. Family so, affair. Mm-hmm, yeah, my auntie did not play about it. Fun fact, when I was born, my mama was really scared to do my hair because it was, you know, like when you're first born, like your hair, I don't know why why it comes out. I should look into that about, like, you know how a baby's hair, like, kind of kind of silky when it mm-hmm. comes out, and then eventually it gets into its natural state. So my hair was so, like... She said it was so silky, like she couldn't. She she was scared, so she would call my. I think over it varies. Me. Like my mom said, I came out with like a mini fro. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was over here looking for you to agree. You never did. So, <laughs> but apparently, like my hair was like very um like I guess she couldn't she couldn't grab it or whatever. So my aunt would come over to do my hair. Um, and so I got a little bit older, and then my mom would do it. But I would go and get my hair done every week, baby. Mm. every week um but i didn't know that my hair was curly like i didn't know that i had a curl pattern because i just used to wear my i was a straight natural my whole life so i would get my hair washed and then i would blow dry it would be blown out immediately so i never knew that i had a curl pattern. i'm sorry to blow out but like this it gave like oh, i was the rage like the hair the face a blow out like this was my hair like and i remember like, i had a lot of hair um and i feel like every black girl like my mom didn't get that perm in my hair i'm gonna have down my back but uh I or remember- y'all part cherokee <laughs> That pissed okay. me off so bad. <laughs> She's just like, baby, you know, I had that in your family. So. My grandma claimed we part Cherokee. Yeah, but, um, my, my parents. I just be like, every black, every black person right. said they part Indian. They be like, you got that good hair. You part Indian. Yeah. No, I'm black and with good hair. I like, know stop. that I am because of my cheekbone. Hey, hey, <laughs> let's really back in. Let's finish your hair journey because now you talking about the Indian trail, trail of tears. We not getting into that right now. You got it. You lost your mind. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, back to my story. So, um, I remember as I was getting older, I was getting, um, I was going to middle school. A lot of the other girls, they were like wearing their hair in different styles. Like they would do like the the twist with the little rubber bands, and you know you would have your hair straightened out in the back. So my hair would always puff up because I was natural and. I remember like it was just certain styles that I wanted and it was really hard to maintain my hair. So my mom was very hesitant about giving me a relaxer, but I eventually got one. I remember the first time I got it, my hair was silky and smooth. It was in my bag. I was like, yes, like grabbing missing out. And so um, my hair pretty much stayed healthy because like I said, I would go and get my hair done every Saturday. Every Saturday at 10 o'clock, I would get my hair done. Yeah. Um, and so... It was healthy until I started doing it. And then I started 
<laughs> you know, frying my hair every day. Because mm. I had to have, eventually my mom, like my eighth grade year, my mom would let me wear my hair in a wrap. Um, because the other years I had to wear it in ponytails. Um, and so when I started doing it, my hair unfortunately started falling out. And um, oh. that's when my cousin came. And shout out to my cousin. Um, she started to put sewings into my hair. Um, and that kind of really helped my hair grow back. Um, not the leave out part, because I don't know if y'all remember back then we used to do the leave outs. We used to do the Vixen. Y'all remember the Vixen sewing? You remember that? I didn't wear weaves until I got oh, to excuse, college. Excuse so, me. like, I didn't do no type of sewing. Like, I had a clippings oh. for a prom one year, but sewings that, mm. no. Okay. Not under my dad's watch. Well, I had, I remember I had. And my hair was done, baby, every day, every day, because I had the flexi rods. So my hair was done. People have told me that my hair would look good in high school. Um. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's bring it back to the end of the journey, because it's getting intense. <laughs> it's getting a little intense. Do not piss me off right now. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, I was wearing, like, weaves and stuff like that, <laughs> moving into, into college. About okay, yeah, I was wearing weaves and stuff like that. Like the introduction was crazy. And so I moved into college, still was getting my hair straight, and still every time I went home, baby, I need a perm. Um, but as I got towards my junior year of college, um, it started getting harder to go back home. I started needing, like, I kept feeling my roots, so I um I was just straightening my hair. Um, and once I crossed in my sorority. A lot of my line sisters were natural, and I thought, well, maybe I'll try it. So I went natural, um, and I've been natural ever since. I've never done a bit chop. Um, oh. Yeah, I've never done a bit chop, so I my guess bad. it's the relaxer kind of grew out of it, or eventually, I guess my trims got rid of, you know, like when you get trims. So. Yeah, so you, then you technically cut it. Like, you didn't do the big chop, chop but you trimmed your hair. No, you, no, you got shaping. My hair just always told me, you, you trim bushes, you shape hair. Like she was very serious, uh, and she was like, you wash the way that clothes, she told me you was shampoo like hair. Intense. Oh, I'm sorry. Like it was intense when she told me. So, yeah. like, Thank yeah. Into the next thing, <laughs> like, um, what's one hair struggle that you have? Um, I think because I, it was, it was recently that I went, went natural. Like it wasn't that many years ago that I wasn't an undergrad. So I feel like I'm an, what? I'm sorry. You have a whole master's degree. You talk about <laughs> it wasn't that many years ago. It wasn't. It was about like four years ago. That's a whole nother undergrad degree experience. Okay. That's not that long. Taylor. Okay. Rock out. <laughs> Cause you, I, you started your journey about four years ago. Of what? Of your, of like. I've been a loose natural my whole life, technically. Yeah, but she was a straight loose natural. That's loose. like not how it works. Like, that's not a term. I just want to, it is a straight natural. I've been using, say what I don't That's, that's right your now. perception, but it's just like, I've never, like, I've been a loose natural my whole life. Okay. I've never put the creamy crack in my head. But what I'm saying is you start appreciating your curls in a natural state. Yeah. Yeah. Like four years ago for you. So that hasn't been that long. You're missing the point. So just continue on with your story. You're missing it. Not at all. Like, not at all. (laughs) What was the question? Grief. Um, What is your one hair struggle? Okay. Now I remember what I was saying. So it hasn't been that long, despite what Taylor said, it hasn't been that long ago since I started, since I started my natural hair journey. And so I feel like the totality of it is truly what I I struggle with because I still have to rely on my friends who have been natural longer than me uh, or who have experience with natural hair. Um, because sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. Like I have a mental breakdown because I don't like for my hair not to be done. Mm. But I feel like I still have to learn, like, the different products, what's best for my hair, um, different hairstyles I can wear, being okay with it in its natural state. Uh, 
But yeah, I think it's truly the totality of it all for me. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> for me, my one hair struggle is finding lock products. Oh, I just be feeling like the ones I try to like, I don't see much of a difference like a leave-in conditioner mm-hmm. spray that is lightweight because I don't want no men taking the locks. Mm. Like, yes, I detox them, but I don't want any buildup. So finding things of that nature is hard. Like, I did recently just find a shampoo that I didn't think would, like, eat the girls down, but it does. Like, head and shoulders, like, it's like an apple cider vinegar base. Yeah. Now. I said, ooh, it left the roots looking a little silky. I said, this is something new. Um, I like that. Um, but it's like finding hair care products for locks. I oftentimes just use natural remedies, which I don't have a problem with that. But I wish, like, I mean, sometimes when I'm feeling lazy, like, I wish I'd go mm. pick up something. Um, but, yeah, I guess the next thing is what is one thing you want black people to know about their hair? Um, something I want black people to know about their hair is something I want us to be aware of first is that we do a good job of shaming one another for our hair decisions. So you have some black women that would like to wear their hair straight in its natural state, or you have some that would like to wear it in its natural state, or you have some that would like to lock it up, or you have someone who's totally on a different um, side of that and would like to be relaxed. So I think that we do a good job of shaming women for their hair decisions. And I don't think that we should do that because we, just like me and Taylor describe our hair journeys, two totally different journeys. Um, And even though we both ended up natural and are wearing our hair in a natural state, that's our decision to make. And I don't think that we should shame one another for wanting to be relaxed or wanting to be natural because that's our decision and i think that if anything black people should come together and celebrate hair and celebrate the fact that our hair can be shaped and can be transformed into so many different forms so i i guess i would like for black people to know that you can wear your hair how you want to and you shouldn't be ashamed for that wow it's poetry night um so for me i would say that i guess it's a kind of preview into the notes but um hair is a form of expression so if i want to wear the cornrows one day then a bust down middle part that's a 30 inch the next day Mm -hmm. and then maybe i found a cute synthetica that i like and i knew how to like really eat the girls down with that and and then wear that next and then maybe the next day um i want soft locks i can do what i want to do with my hair because you know why i pay for all the services and as long as i'm not hurting anybody i can do that Mm -hmm. so i feel like express yourself the way you would like to express yourself like if that's wearing a hairstyle for one week like you got it sis like do you um and i just i'm gonna use that as a segue into someone i look up to hair wise which is the next question Uh, i have to say my mom because when i think about it it's like through every phase of her hair journey like she was unapologetic about it when my mom had her little short pixie cut she ate the girls down when my mom had hers, I won't call it a jerry curl because I just never claimed my mom <laughs> had a jerry curl. I think it was a texturizer. And it was like a low cut. She ate the girls down. Um, and now she has locks, just like me. She's going to eat the girls down. Like, she's unapologetic about it because people in our family, they just be like, you going to wear your hair like that? And it's like, she's like, yeah, and what about it? And I respect that so much. And it really seeing that as i mean i'm a grown woman now but as a little girl empowered me to be like hair ain't like hair will grow back like and if not i can get me a bust down middle part um so that's someone who i looked up to what about you um so anyone who knows me knows that i love insecure that's one of my favorite shows um and so and watch watching the show I look up to Issa 
um, because she, I feel like she does a great job of showcasing natural hair as elegance. So she made sure in every, and I feel like in every season, we were able to see the growth um, of her hair and she was able to put it in so many different styles and it made me truly realize that I could, I could wear my natural hair and it could be beautiful, it could be elegant. Because uh, I think that we, especially black women, we do a good job of when it's a special occasion, like a wedding or something that we're going to or a birthday, you know, it's it's quick, it's easy for us to get a bust down middle part. And I'm saying that's not beautiful on black women, but I think that Issa does a good job of showcasing that natural hair can be also elegant, can also be a celebration style. Um, and I look up to her and I aspire to be like her, to wear my natural hair more and to not rely necessarily on other other hairstyles or protective styles or weaves and things of that nature to make me feel beautiful. So I definitely look up to Issa. Shout out to my girl. Shout out to Miss Ray. Um... Why are you laughing? <laughs> Shout out to Miss Ray. <laughs> um, so I think it's not taking time. Not taking time. Yeah, the we need we need to find we need to find a jingle for that. But yeah, it's not taking time. So the first note is taking care of your hair is self care, and let me tell you why. Because when you look good, you feel good. I did a whole presentation on this one time in college. And there is what actually class was that for? my communications class. That's crazy. I did a presentation on um, black hair. It wasn't necessarily about black hair. It was just, um, <laughs> you look good, you feel good. And I'm talking about the importance of like your outward appearance. Did you face it? Oh, baby, I got passed with flying colors. Me yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, talk about it. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to my um, communications professor because he said, um, my, it was a it was a white man. Um, Martin Luther King and Jesus were the best orators. He's um, was the best what orators. <laughs> I said, yeah. He didn't know what to say after that speech. You probably got because knowing you, I didn't get pro black in like your appearance. Like, I didn't really do all. Do I, I don't think that you were aware of it, but I think you you carry that aura. Like you carry that like that you're Angela Davis. I'm tired of this. Um, so yeah, it is it is self care because if you look good, you feel good. Yeah. And it's also just something you should know you should know or like take pride in wanting to learn how to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. You got number two? <sighs> yeah, I'm just be real like this take number two and she said over <laughs> like I wanna do note number three. Why would you tell the people <laughs> One thing I value is transparency. Like, we really went through the mud to get this episode. Got it out of the mud. Hey, little baby, please. <laughs> um, wear funny. your hair unapologetically. If you want... <laughs> if you want... Yeah, <laughs> if you want... Like I said earlier, if you want to wear your hair young, wild, and free, do as you please. All right, um, that's enough jingle. So, like, you can go <laughs> on to the next one. So, moving on to our third and final note. So, embrace what your what our ancestors dreamed of <laughs> as racist. <laughs> We're just gonna reiterate that again. <laughs> Embrace what your ancestors dreamed of expressing. Yes. So <laughs> I feel like our ancestors, we all know that our ancestors did not have the opportunity um, to showcase their beauty, to showcase their hair. So even Taylor said, like, they forced them to shave their heads um, and they had to either shave them or cover them up. And a lot of times their hair was used for um, not necessarily to express them, but to guide other slaves outside of, um, to like lead them from to freedom. To freedom! I, I knew you was gonna say that when I said, please don't say freedom, but it got We you. are not Onika stands over here. Shout out to Meg. We love you, girl. I love Megan. Like, I love Megan. Um, <laughs> but 
Um, yeah, a lot of our ancestors were not given the opportunity to express themselves through their hair or wear it how they wanted to, or even be proud of how their hair texture was. And so I feel like now that we have the opportunity to showcase that, we should do so. So however you want to wear your hair, um, I think that it's a celebration um, and an honor for um, us to be able to, if we want to wear it in braids, so we want to wear it in um, in its natural state or a twist out or whatever you want to do with your hair, I feel like it's an honor to um, to be able to do that because our ancestors, unfortunately, were not able to do that. And I think they would be really proud of us um, if they knew where we were now and how we wear our hair. Yeah, and shout out to the men because the tent fade eats. Yeah, I love a good eat. tent fade. And I love a good, um, you got your locks right here with the tent fade, like that. Eats. I love it, like when they have like the, <laughs> I what like, because <laughs> I was like, we're going, we going way over this. Or the waves. I love a man with waves. So. I like a man with locks. And like when he able to like pit it up in like a little bun, like, yes, that's safe. Help. Um, yes, I love that. We love that for you. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> I also like like this whole thing with the hair. Like, I love hair. Okay, thank you for sharing. Um, so <laughs> as y'all know, it's Black History Month. As I said, my favorite month. Um, to be young, gifted, and black. That's us. So we are going to share a random Black history fact at the end of every episode. Mm -hmm. Um, so the February is a great month. Oh, okay, it's a great month. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a I just want to say because she didn't want me to say it, but February is a wonderful month because you sound like the church ladies who go up <laughs> and they do the February birthdays and they go up there and just let me do it for February. February is a wonderful <laughs> month. Let's give it up for all the blessings, but we do have a lot of blessings, like it's a celebration of black people. Like a black people, we have a whole month, even though we probably should have more, but we have a whole month to celebrate black people. And not only do we have a whole month, we got the day of love, and which you can share with your significant other, or you can share it like in a Valentine's Day, whatever you want to do. It's an expression of love. And then my mama did her a big one. Shout out to my mama having me on the last day. That my mama did that. Like that's you did that girl. Go ahead. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Um, well, all the Pisces stand. Um, so the random black history fact is that the <laughs> Why did you deep <laughs> The theme is called here, bro. But all I, I'm trying to get the fact that Sometimes Are you have, okay? Like... Sometimes you have to breathe. Okay, fabulous. Um, the theme song to the public television popular children program, Reading Rainbow, Reading Rainbow, like I simply was almost done, <laughs> is sung by my girl Shaka Khan. Okay, don't play with that lady. Uh, Y'all got to run that back. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Shaka Khan. Yes. Reading Rainbow was a show. It was a moment. Mm -hmm. um, but while we're on the topic of bringing black, bringing back programming, let's bring back Bobby Jones gospel. That <laughs> was it. That's not what we need to bring back. Yes, it, you will never disrespect Bobby Jones gospel. You <laughs> no. never. My daddy said he was nice when he met him at the Olympics. Why have your dad met? <laughs> your dad it was in Atlanta. It was in Atlanta. That's why he met him. <laughs> Every time I talk to Santa, she give a random fact about her parents. Her parents have lived a life. <laughs> they have lived a life. <laughs> but you know what they really need to bring back? Please. Black girls who rock. I'm sorry. Or black girl. What was it? Black girls that rock? Yeah. Black girls rock? You don't even know. It. Because they said like several different slogans within it, They're like we rock, black girls rock. Like they just like, said, "Look at BT, BT." If they bringing that back, they bring it back. Dark and lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of remember dark and lovely, what? and I was like, "Damn, why can't I be light skinned and lovely?" Now, now that's <laughs> <laughs> you 
So that one, that would have shut that down immediately. But they could have just been like they could have came up with a different day because I'm like, what like about they, they incorporating like everybody? Because we dark compared to other like you're not your light skin, but we're dark compared to other races. So I think that was. The I thing. think you was on the marketing team. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I was. I don't think that's what they because every time I view else. every time I view the box, it was a either a brown skin lady or a darker sorry, skin I'm, lady, I'm and it's like I don't have no problem with it because like we being real, like darker skin women don't get the shine that they need. But I was just like, once like I don't have representation in this. Fight. How it felt though, it didn't feel good, did it? I live. Like, <laughs> okay. I wasn't really like bad to the bone. Like I wasn't hurt. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that BT bring back black girls who rock. Girl, they focus on the um, hip hop awards. They bring not. bring it back and let me be on the marketing team. You know, it'd be a shame if like it's still going on. We <laughs> I know it ain't going on because I would tune in every year. I know stop. it ain't going on. Stop. No, Sissy, stop. I won't. I won't stop until BET bring it back. And I'm on the I'm on the marketing team. Y'all see Tiana on the marketing team. And on that note, shout out to all the Tayloronians watching. And shout out to my mentor who came up with it. Taylor plus Tenderonies equals Tayloronies. Shout out to all my supporters. I see y'all reposting. Like, thank you for reposting. supporting us. Yeah. Um and if you don't mess with the Taylor Ronies, like I'm sorry, like I really love it. I love it. Uh, we need something for Tiana, but something that's not cheesy like Taylor Ronies. Um, Hater alert for real. Something like, that's, that's not all the Taylor Ronies like drop in the comments like Taylor Roni. Okay, well you can't tell your Taylor Ronies to do something. <laughs> yes, I can. Like, like Tiana, yes, I can. Like you... Tiana fan base or like support group. <laughs> you the one that didn't want to like come up with I don't like, like no it's not that it's simply not that it's the Taylor Romney's piss me off it's really cute like it's not because I don't this time I'm convinced that you probably was born <laughs> in the 70s or 80s and you were lying I, to everybody I simply I stuff. simply would be like Benjamin Buttons like they would simply be studying me because there's no way I was born I in the 70s and look like this there's I no way think that you were born in the 80s maybe perhaps and you just lying to everybody. But on that note, we're going to wrap this episode up. Forgive them, Lord, because they do not know what they do. Anyways. I don't like um, that. I don't like that. Don't. Anyways, um, we're going to end it here. And this is <laughs> season two, episode one. And yeah. that's a wrap. <laughs>